Hi guys, so today I'm down by um, some a little bit of woodland and fields, uh, some of the small meadows where I sometimes come to gather some supplies. Um, I'm going to try and find some supplies today that I'm going to be needing. Um, I do want to get a hold of some some pine needles and some nettles for teas um, and some birch bark from the store later um, in my little tins that you've seen me use in my other video. Uh, I like this place a lot, there's birch everywhere, um, you can probably see from the floor, there's pine needles everywhere, so you've got plenty of tinder here. Um, we have got a lot of different plant life around here, there is a lot of animal life around here too, um, quite early in the morning there's a lot of rabbits around here, um, we're quite close to some ponds and canals, so um, there's a lot, a lot of bird life as well, um, you can probably hear a few. Um, so I'm going to talk you through some stuff today, and hopefully you'll find it informative, or if there's a, um, anything that uh, you're unsure about, as always, just comment at the bottom, and I'll hopefully answer those questions for you. I've got some of my kit with me, I will try and show you how some of it works, um, I've even got um, a, one of the uh, the rustic tin can stoves, which I'm hoping to show you a little bit of how that works, I've got plenty of tinder around here, so I don't see why that shouldn't work out too well for us, so uh, let's crack on. Right guys, so one of the first things I've come across um, is this lovely birch tree. Um, birch trees are really useful when you're out and about because its bark is um, a brilliant for tinder. And when they get a little bit older, uh, the trees have this nice white bark on it so they're easily identifiable. Um, but with the bark itself, I use it in a few different stages. If you can get a nice block of bark off the tree without obviously damaging the tree, perfect take that along with you because you can use that as a platform uh, we can scrape it um, with the back end of a knife and create some fine shavings that will catch a spark um, you can also just peel off normally in quite big chunks all the bark as it's peeling um, as it's molting um, so you can take that you can store it I've, I've actually just stored some um, in one of my little tins which will dry out nicely and you can use that later on then um, for your fire making. So birch is one of the best trees you can probably come across out here and help you out uh, a great deal. The other one that I'm looking for um, is a pine tree um, which I'm hoping I'm gonna head over to um, a spot where I know there is some pine. I mean there's some little bits of fern over here which are quite useful but I'm gonna head over to another part of the field where I, th I know there is some pine over there so I can hopefully get some maybe some pine resin, um, some pine needles um, and hopefully some other bits and pieces too. So let's pop over to there. I mean, no, I haven't had to go too far, but nice pine tree. Um, I'm probably not going to do anything with this one. There's a lot of blackberry thorns and things around here, uh, so I can't get too close to the actual tree. But the pine needles themselves, a lot of the ones on this, this tree um, has got some quite healthy needles, but it's got some quite dead branches on it too. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take some of these needles, which I can use later on for teas. Um, I'm going to try and find another pine tree a bit further down, which I can probably get a bit closer to, and see if I can get some pine resin off it underneath the bark. Um, to be honest, looking at this one, it's probably quite doubtful. But we'll, we'll have a look, we'll see what we can find. See if there's any pine cones on the floor as well, because they can be good as, uh, for catching embers. And you can transport that quite easily as well, once that catches an ember. So all you do if you're harvesting pine needles, just simply grab a few and just pull back towards you and you'll get a handful of pine needles. Um, what I always tend to do with these is obviously filter out any dead ones that you have. Um, and what you want to do with that then is these little black bits on the end, you want to pull those off before you make them into teas. So you don't need many, you can you chop them up quite nicely. Um, let them stoop in the tea for about 15-20 minutes and it tastes quite nice to be fair I was quite surprised the first time I had pine needle tea um, but I do prefer a nettle tea so we're going to try and find some nettles um, that look quite healthy Let's see if we can take some of those too well see that right there in front of us just goes to show just how uh, out and proud the old silver birch trees are um, easily spotable amongst anything else because of that bright white bark so no matter where you are you're probably easily going to find some uh, some silver birch if it stands out as good as that um, there is another pine tree over here there's some some more birch but again this one this one's not looking too too healthy 
so probably going to leave this one too. I'm going to head over to my usual spot um, and try and set up a little, little bit of a, a sit for a bit. And we'll make, we'll make some stuff up and see so what we can get going. So here we are, heading over to my, my usual spot. I like this bit. It's uh, got a lot of resources around, but it's also got this nice open field. Uh, so in the morning, if you want to look for rabbits or anything, you, you can do. Um, we've got some nice pine trees up here too, so I'll see what we can get off of these. Um, there is a patch up here as well where I sometimes get some nettles from, so I'm hoping to get some while I'm up here. Let's see what we got up here. In fact, I can probably see the remnants of my last fire still up there uh, from the last time I was here a few weeks ago. It's quite, it's quite weird because around here, um, I live pretty close to to a lot of houses and things like that so you do you do find this is one of the the uh, um, the best woody places to come but nobody really knows that it's here which is quite handy so there's my fire from last time still here pretty often anyone comes over here so in here um, like I say you can normally find a lot of resources in here um, it's a lot of birch there's birch absolutely everywhere that was nice, just walked into a spider web. And then we have an abundance of pine trees. The only downside with round um, where I am, in comparison to other places you might stop, like I say, I use this place primarily just to gather resources because you do find you do get a lot of litter and stuff over here. Um, so some of the stuff's probably not that healthy. That's why you do really have to have a good look over here before you uh, utilize anything. But already, there's a, lot, there's a few pine cones around here, which we can use as tinder with the pine needles um, <coughs> but a lot of the trees around here don't look like they've got any pine resin on which is what I was hoping for today because I'm really running low uh, but we'll definitely take some more pine needles from here because these are healthier trees um, I do like the trees down here over the ones up the top we'll probably try and harvest a bit more a bit more birch bark too uh, try and get some good slabs that we can take back in case, uh, in case we need it long term um, as you can see, there's a lot of people that walk and mess around over here. Um, you've got some makeshift tools people have used as hammers and things. Um, you will find this kind of stuff a lot if you're out and about. Just try not to use anything that's been sitting too long, because obviously the rot isn't going to help you too much. Just made it down to this water's edge. This is one of the, the many canals um, and ponds that we have around here. Quite commonly around here, you will find bulrushes growing especially down the bottom, you can see them starting to pop up. You do find that these will grow quite close to the edge sometimes. Um, if they do, you know, little shoots here like these, they'll go quite tall out the ground, grow about four foot out the ground, uh, off the top of the water, sorry. Um, but the good thing with the bulrush, you can split a bulrush, um, and what will happen inside it, it's nice and fluffy. In fact, I think you can see one that I started harvesting last time I was here, but I left it to grow a little bit. So the bulrushes aren't really in season at the moment, so what you've got is this kind of this kind of fluffy stuff just here. And this is more flammable than cotton wool. <laughs> it goes up very, very quickly. The only downside with it is you do have to sort of check over it, especially if you're storing it for later, you get a lot of spiders, like Mr. Spider, um, and other bugs and insects um, that will hide out in them because obviously they're warm. So it's quite a useful tool to carry. If you do find some bulrushes, I always tend to, to try and stock up a little bit on some bulrush fluff um, just for later on, should I need it. Right, well, I'm going to take you back up over onto where I had my fire last time, um, try and get a good little platform going and uh, show you how the tin can stove works, um, which, to be fair, couldn't find my old one. So I've quickly knocked one up this morning. <laughs> it's not the best one, but it certainly does the job. Just need to get some wood and, and some kindling going first. Right then guys, so um, I've switched to um, primarily using my GoPro which is strapped to my head. So I do apologise if, uh, if you can't see as much as me. Um, but it is just my point of view from the top of my head. <laughs> um, what we're going to do then is, first of all, get my little chair out. A little cheap chair, so I don't have to sit on the floor. Um, I'm going to show you the tin can stove. Um, now, the tin can stove is something that 
very easy to make, very cheap to make, um, especially considering it only takes two tin cans. So it's quite a useful thing to carry in your toolkit. Now mine, like I said, I, I had to knock one up this morning because it's all for the life of me what I've done with my last one. So essentially, I'll just show you, this one is quite a rustic one. This is your tin can stove. So all you, all you have is two tin cans. One is smaller than the other. What you've done is you have taken, obviously, the top off and drained the contents. So I just use this for an old can of beans. Um, what we've then done is turn it upside down and drew around the edge of our smaller can. Now, by doing that, you can make sure that, that fits inside. Take that top bit off. With this one, this was quite a close fit, so I literally just took the top off and crimped the edge. It's not very neat, I know, but it does work. Then what you do is just drill some air holes in the bottom. I've drilled a couple a bit higher up as well, because these cans are quite a similar length. Ideally, you want one that's, that's a little bit shorter, uh, just to allow more oxygen through. With your smaller can, very easy to prepare. Just drill some holes in the bottom, drill some holes around the top, the, the side of the bottom, and then just drop it in the top. Just make sure all your air holes are at the bottom, and then essentially that's ready to go. So all you're going to do, these run off wood, so I'm actually going to put my, my ball rush that we picked a minute ago in there, just to help it get going. I have been collecting a, a little bit of dead, dead twigs just to be on the safe side. Um, did rain last night, so I'm hoping this takes off a little bit better. Now, typically, if you if you use it something like like birch, or you can get hold of some fat wood or anything like that, this these will actually burn for a very very long time. Um, with these as well, what I like with them is the temperature in which they burn at. Um, you can boil water very very quickly on these. They do work quite effectively as a little little stove. So. You know, at least if you if you're out in a boat and you you haven't got access to to an actual stove to cook on, um, I always carry a little um, cheap stainless steel ice bucket. You just empty your contents like your beans or whatever into here. Knock yourself up a little stove. That will sit on the top and cook nicely. So let's get him going. Now a tin can stoves up and running. Um, the one thing I am going to try and do just because the ground's a bit more unstable up here. Um, I'm going to find some, some nice bits of strong young wood um, and make a little pot stand either side just to balance my, uh, my little ice bucket on the top. So there we go, um, just hammered in a bit of a bit of birch there, um, just holding my nice little uh, bit of cookware on top. Got a nice leaf in my water though, I'm going to have to filter that before I drink it. Um, just to show you really that this can this can work. I mean, as you can see down there, the, the can's going. It's going good. The oxygen flows good through there. So you know, for, for something that you'd normally throw in the bin, you can make yourself a tool out of. Um, and considering, I mean, all I've done is, I mean, this is just an old an old pocket off a pair of trousers. I've literally just cut the pocket out, stitched it a little bit, and I just keep it in there, because obviously it gets a bit dirty, obviously let it cool first, if you can rinse it off with a bit of cold water if you've got some, just before you pack it away, but to keep it in here, it'll keep the dirt and the soot and stuff off all your other kit, um, but it's just it's just an inexpensive way of being able to quickly just pop up, especially little home comforts like having a cup of tea, it makes all the difference just to quickly be able to boil a bit of water, which this, as you can see, is actually starting to work quite well. Obviously if I had some, I didn't bring my foil with me today, if I brought my, my foil out with me or um, <coughs> if I had something similar I could use it just to cover the top, in fact that's getting quite hot already, um, just to obviously make it boil a bit quicker but I'm in no rush, um, it's nice to have the, the option at least. So tin can stove, I mean although I've gone through it briefly how to make it, um, I will probably do a video at some point just to, just to show you how to make it. But for something that takes up very little room, it can make all the difference. And obviously, it's something secondary to have other than your actual fire. Uh, you have <coughs> got the option with these, as well as using them to cook with, they do kick out an enormous amount of heat. So, you know, I have known some of my friends that when they're, they are out and about, 
they'll put these in the entranceway to the tents or you know into their shelter systems just just as a way just to keep a bit of heating going really like i say little luxuries make all the difference boost your morale and it uh can, especially in shitty weather it can make what is a, a crappy day just that little bit better so guys i was on my way back and uh, came across this which is a nice uh fire that someone's had recently but um, as you can see very inexperienced people um, basically chucking any old shit on here sometimes though these kind of things can be a little gold mine um, come along here find some decent charcoal which you can use to make up embers later if, if the fire's been done right um, you've got things like these big logs bastard they are to carry back but I've got about I don't know, about 50 feet of rope in my bag, so I could probably lash the two in some way, shape, or form. Just as something to sit on, keep your ass off the ground, stop yourself getting wet. Um, also, you can sometimes find, especially if people have been making fires, sometimes leave their tools lying around. Um, I found in the past little mallets people have made out of uh, old tree trunks and stuff, and they actually come quite in useful. Um, handy pieces of tools, especially if it then means you don't have to make them yourself, which is always good fun. Um, plus, if worst comes to worst, it's an extra log to stick on your fire. So, if you ever do see an old fire pit, always come and have a look. So, this one's just full of shit, um, including a statue for Colleen Holden. Well done, Colleen, your Oscar's here. Um, <coughs> but if you do find one of quality, there's normally some bit, bits and pieces you can salvage out of there. Right, and guys, I'm, I'm heading back around to home now, come back into a the more rural area, as you can probably see. Um, but in fact, I've got a big road above my head. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this one today. Um, I know it's not the most exciting of videos, but uh, if you do, do have any questions or comments, do leave them below, and as always, I'll try and answer them as best I can. So, thanks for watching. Cheers.